Yes, hello again, everyone. We are now in the first day of May, May 1. And uh, today we're taking on lesson number 8 in our series, Statistics Made Easy. Today we will learn about analysis of covariance. In the last lesson, lesson 7, we learned how to conduct a report multi way and over. Today, 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 we're looking at analysis of covariance. Its history, mathematical model, when to use, how to use, and report its findings. So, to begin with, what's the short form of analysis of covariance? Actually, it's an cover, like analysis of covariance. You can write it as full capital, like this, or you write it with the A starting in capital, or in lowercase, all the way through. All of these are correct, but usually, in the texts, when it's in the middle of the sentence, this is good. And as of covariance, when it starts the sentence, this is good. This one, as the spirit moves you, uh, you use. So, but we should use these statistics that we've been talking about and over and over and all that. It's, uh, they, they, they're actually free for all. Agricultural scientists, you can use them. Medical scientists, social scientists. By the way, a lot of medical scientists and agri scientists and other scientists and engineers used statistics because the originators or the inventors were statisticians and uh, scientists, other scientists. So educational researchers, engineers, researchers in the arts and administration, lawyers, you can use all the statistics. That is, anybody who is interested in studying groups and finding out if differences exist among them can use any of these statistics. So. Are the mathematical models different from one discipline to the other? The answer is no, the answer is no, and the answer is no. The same model for all. That is, all of these people, the same model that we will apply. Before we take a dive into analysis of covariance, dive in, into it. Let's look at three case studies. Case study number one is uh, some scientists wanted to test a drug, X, on the recovery rate from COVID-19. And we have two groups, experimental and control. And for the experimental group, unknown to the researchers, these three people have, actually all of them, have inherent in them immune system that can enable them to recover from COVID-19 and some biochemical characteristics that can also help them recover. For instance, this lady has four. She has six. This has three. She has three. This, this, uh, she has two, this, uh, the, uh, she has one, a control. So at the end of it, you now find out that the experimental group were able to quickly recover uh, uh, fa uh, faster than the control group. You can't come to the decision. In fact, that, that debate is raging on CNN as I speak today, May 1. You can't come to the decision that this is better because these people already have some things inherent in them that, were, that enabled them to speed up the process faster than these people. Let's take move to agriculture. Agricultural scientists wanting to find out, test the yield of a new variety of crop. And planted here, planted there. Here is control. Here is experimental. At the end of harvest, you find that oh, the experimental crops are not growing as well as the control. Now come to the conclusion that the new crop variety is bad because the soil condition under which uh, the experimental crops grew uh, had 35% in terms of suitability. Soil condition is 85% in terms of suitability. So let's go on to education. You know, I want to try out a method of teaching a, uh, difficult concepts. I use CTCA for this group. It is the control group. The topic, for instance, is uh, energy flow in the ecosystem. What? Unknown to you. This CTC group has an entry level of 10 out of 50 on that concept. The control has an entry level of 30 out of 50 that concept. So at the end of, fin at the, end of the treatment, and you test out of 50, these people have made uh, 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 35. And this pool made 42. So you can't come to the conclusion, justifiably, that the control group did better 
than the CTC group because we have not recognized the entry level characteristics of the group. So let's look at a sports example. You know, all the way around here, the, the track, the same length. But this person has to go, if you put all of them together here, the man on the Sata mostly will have a shorter distance. So that's why they are spaced like this. The moral of the old story, you know, giving you a story all along, that if random assignment to groups is difficult to achieve, you must, ladies and gentlemen, take initial differences into consideration before performing the ANOVA. What you do at that time is you are performing an analysis of covariance. Class is asking me a question now. What's your question now? We oh, are yeah, here. Can you give us some examples of initial differences? I thought I just mentioned that before, but let me give you a concrete terms. Let's take the case of testing of COVID-19 drug. You see, we need to have measured initial body biochemical properties that are relevant to the measures of end state recovery. For the crop yield, we needed to have measured the initial soil properties that can be implicated in the crop yield. For the test of the new method, we had to conduct pre-test course of students on the topic to be taught using the method. So all such initial scores of the dependent variable before treatment we call the covariance. So we are moving to what analysis of covariance is. Now let's have some life examples from studies that have been proposed by students in our class. Let's say that of Henry Okori, who wants to examine the impact of e-learning usage on university students' academic achievement and creativity. Okori must have the pretest achievement and pretest creativity scores before conducting the e-learning treatment. We look at Sotel Ndiho Kowayo. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that surname correctly. Uh, who is looking at soil, water, and nutrients dynamics in coffee-based agroforestry systems in central plateaus of Burundi? Yeah, you see, soil and water conditions must have to be determined before treatment should be obtained. As uh, this should be the covariance. Another question, yes, coming from the class. Yes, I'm ready for you today. We know variance. Uh huh. Yes. So no, we thought that in uh, lesson two. So what is covariance? Uh, covariance is the brother of variance. That's, uh, that's a simple answer. But let me uh, be serious now. The covariance is a measure of how much two random variables vary together. Covary. Covary. It is similar to variance. But where variance tells you how a single variable varies, covariance tells you how two variables vary together pre-test and post-test, before and after scores. Oh, brief history of Ankova. A man, a man is here again. Uh, who has the same birthday with me? Ro, uh, Ro, Ronald Fisher. Ronald Fisher is here. It was in 1927, ladies and gentlemen, that Fisher introduced an answer of covariance as a method for factoring, factoring out the effects of conditions that are not part of the experimental design but which are there and can be measured. This is the paper which generated, which generated uh, the ANCOVA uh, statistic. So this is a crop variation. As I mentioned to you, ANCOVA is not for education. It's not for medicine. It's, not, it's for everybody. Yeah, yeah. So what's the mathematical model? What ANCOVA tries to do is a blend. What ANCOVA is, is to blend regression and ANOVA. Regression, it drags everybody back. What it does, is to literally drag everybody to the same baseline, regardless of initial differences. So if you are you have 10, the other one is 5, the other one is 2, the other one is 3, it will regress everybody to the same baseline before conducting the ANOVA on the adjusted scores. Ain't that brilliant? Oh, covariance, you are very, very brilliant. That's very smart. You are very smart. I think that's the correct uh, uh, label. What are the advantages now of ANCOVA? That's more power. And as I said earlier, that just for pre-treatment differences between the groups. Hmm. Let's go on to how we use ANCOVA. 
what are the assumptions that we must meet in ANOVA? I said we have three major assumptions that we must, we must admit. Normality of population, homogeneity of variance, random assignment. Now, now, now. Because regression has come in here, Ankova is asking for another assumption to be met. That's matter of pronounce it homo scedasticity. Homo scedasticity of data. I'm going to tell you, oh, I wanted to tell you, and you're asking me again, class, okay, what's the meaning of homo scedasticity? The meaning, I'm not Google. Go and check Google. Leave me alone. Uh, class, go and Google the thing. But I tell you, homo scedasticity is tongue twisting. You know, it's trying to twist my tongue, but I'm not going to agree. Means having the scheme scatter. So, you see, when you plot, uh, the, when you plot uh, this, the predictor against the predictor, you find that it, it must follow the most cling al along this line, the most, uh, yes, cling along the line. It must not, uh, it must have the same scatter. It must go like this, like a line, rather than scattered all over the place. You'll see that when we do test for the assumption. Hey, I'm going to scare you a little bit because you can see here the formula of calculating analysis of covariance, but fear no more. Fear no more, my dear brother, my dear sister. There's no need to cram the formula. No need. Cram the formula of Vancouver. No need to cry, baby. No need to cry. Because we are in the age of technology where the computer processes the data using that same formula. Using this formula, the computer will do it, will do it for you. So what you should do, drink coffee, cross your legs, and relax. Yeah, I'm going to drink my coffee now. Huh? Mmm. Yummy. I relax. So the computer will do the work for you. So what statistical tool are we using for the computer to do the work for us? Our choice uh, software is IBM SPSS Statistics, which you can get from your school or you can purchase online or from any credible source. But let me caution that it should not depend on others. Mind you, I've been cautioning every lesson. Don't depend on others to analyze your data for you. This thing, you just follow the simple discussions we have in these lessons. They are easy. Don't trust the mercenaries because they are going to cook your results and they mess up your integrity. And when you are defending your thesis or dissertation, they will not be there. So do it yourself so that you are on top of your game. Now let's look at a real life story. We wanted in our class to find out the effect of, on students of three teaching methods on A, achievement in, B, attitude to, and C, practical skills in physics. Oh, yes. Let's look at, let's take a peep at the data we collected. We collected data using this online questionnaire from the class, surname, first name, and all these demographics. And, uh, Yes, yeah, I can see you. Uh, yeah, so we, we ask you to select a group for the purpose of our class. Group T is the CTC approach group, group S is the analogies group, and group U is a lecture method. And we got all this data, you know, uh, from the class. So we imported the data to SPSS, and uh, we have uh, Odun Adewale and all the people. Nationality institution specialization and all that. So we have the data here uh, for achievement pretests, achievement posters, attitude pretests, attitude posters, which we're going to be using all the way for our lesson. We have extracted a, a portion of our study for this lesson. And this lesson is on one way and cover. Uh -huh. One way. Yeah, one way because we are just looking at achievement in physics. Uh, so the where the problem we want to solve is to find out the effect of three teaching methods of students' achievement in physics. What are the three teaching methods? CTC approach, use of analogies, and the lecture method. And so our research question will be. Or uh, this one way and cover operation is there or will there be 
statistically significant difference in the achievement of students in physics taught using the CTC approach, use of analogies, and the lecture method. And null hypothesis, you can see, just switched quickly. Is you are just changing that, you are just changing this to there will be no, yeah, there will be no. So the null hypothesis is there will be no statistically significant difference in the achievement of students in physics taught using the CTC approach, use of analogies, and the lecture method. So what data do we have? We have collected pre-test data on achievement, post-test data on achievement in physics of students in the three groups. So what are we waiting for? We have our data now, we have SPSS, now time to conduct the one way and over. The procedure again is as easy as ABC. So what do you do? The A part of the ABC is you just go to analyze, general linear model, then univariate. The B part of the ABC is that you go, you select your dependent variable, which is the post-test achievement. And of course, the, pre, the covariate is the pre-test achievement. And then the fixed factor is the method. And then you say, the third C part of uh, of the ABC, you say, you say, okay, how so action time, man, in other theory. So let's let's go. Let's see how this is done. So our procedure, we are now live, ladies and gentlemen, live. So you go to uh, general linear model, univariate. So what's next? Uh huh. I'm waiting for somebody in class. We put the dependent variable, which is the post test achievement. Here, the fixed factor is our method. Here, and the covariate. If the post-test achievement is a dependent is a dependent variable here, then the covariate will have to be pre-test achievement. Put it here. I will reset so I can show you. Dependent variable is a post-test achievement. By the way, we are still going to do for attitude. We are going to do for practical skills. Not in this lesson, but in a workshop that we're going to have in class. So the method, where is the method? Will be the fixed factor, and the covariate is the pre-test achievement score. If we're doing the one for attitude, so we'll keep the method here, and you just change this post-test achievement to pre-test, a uh, post-test attitude, and the pre-test here, the same for practical skills. Now let's look at the model. Model full factorial fine, although we won't be needing that. Contrasts, well, let's cancel this. Let's go to plots. Plots, uh, let's see, let, let's cancel this. Uh, I will come back to a few things later. Uh, let's look at the homogeneity tests. And uh, let's see, maybe discrete statistics, effect size. Well, we, don't be, we won't be needing this uh, for, for now, but doesn't hurt and they will say okay so what do we have yes you can see we have uh, the universal of variance we have the CTCA 18 people use of analogies 12 which you can also find here the descriptive statistics that we asked for CTC as a mean of 39.83 use of analogies 36.83 lecture method 38 point this if i just see this i know that we can't get a significant difference in the method we would have go into the ANOVA table and cover table these are the standard deviations very close to themselves and these the number of students in each of the groups now test of homogeneity of variance is the levin's test if we get this one to be significant we are in trouble means that it's not homogeneous so let's check oh yeah good so it's not significant this p-value or level of significance is greater than 0.05 so it's not significant the meaning is that there is no we know it's homogeneity of variance that means the variances are not different they're not significantly different from themselves and that's what we want but, uh, the main and cover table and the main and cover table is telling us we are looking at this p values this significance of uh, the f here 
so for achievement pretest achievement you can see that it is significant hey this is quite interesting meaning that the students came in differently significantly different in the entry behavior entry scores on physics achievement but the method that's on the that's the post test now you can see that the f value is 0.297 which is much much greater than 0.05 so we don't have a significant difference in the method that is all the, the, the three groups are not significantly different in the achievement in physics so let's see how uh, we go on to step four I will present uh, one way and cover tables so you are going to have a table table one you actually advise to write, uh, put this directly in word rather just copy and paste just type it yourself uh, the, uh, means and star division of uh, post test scores of the three groups. Uh, CTCA, the mean star division, and then the Levin's test of the budget of variance, you can see as we said, is not significant. And uh, here we go with our main uncovered table. So you just say table two, as of covariance or the post -test achievement of the three groups, like that. So you go to have source, sum of squares DF, mean square F. And their significance. You stop it here. You leave out the partial letter. You can see that the F value for achieve pretest achievement is significant. Mean that we had initial differences in all of them. But the and cover accept to drag everybody to the same baseline using regression and ended up with uh, a non-significant value for method. So how do we report? How do you report your findings? So, uh, as you can see, we didn't have any significant F for the method. So this is how you reported. The ANCOVA results showed no significant difference in physics achievement of students taught using CTCA analogies and the lecture method. And then you put this one here, F in bracket, degree of freedom between degree of freedom within, look at them. The degree of freedom here, 2 and 44. You'll be reading the one of the error term here, 44. It's equal to 0 0.74. You know, it's 0 0.744, but two decimal places. P greater than 0 0.05. So what's our decision? Straightforward. We started by saying there will be no statistically significant difference. We found statistically significant difference. So our decision is that hypothesis the null hypothesis that there's no statistical, statistically significant, uh, this thing is uh, twisting my tongue now. <laughs> statistically significant difference is not rejected. Since we did not find a statistically significant difference in physical achievement of students taught using CTCA analogies and the lecture method. To sum up, in this lesson, we learn how to conduct and report one way and over Ankuba. You notice that I didn't test homo scedasticity of data. This is because uh, well, I'm going to tell you about that in, in, the, in the regression part of our lesson. I have some exercises for you that you can relax with. Use the same procedure as we did for lesson six or multi way and over. I want you to try your hands on multi-way and cover. It's the same thing. You take any two of the variables and then you apply the pretest as coverage of the post-test. What's next lesson going to be? Next lesson, we'll learn how we conduct multivariate analysis of variance. Man over for short. Unfortunately, we don't have woman over. Woman over, you have to join us in men to be maneuver. So did I ask somebody say since we have multivariate analysis of variance maneuver as we have ANOVA, we should also have multivariate analysis of covariance man cover. Oh yes, you are all right. You are correct. So we are going to enjoy ourselves in this statistic course. And uh, um, for lesson eight from me, Peter Okebukola, my email ID is this get in touch with me if you have some uh, some issues that you want me to clarify uh, it is bye bye for now best wishes 
for the month of May.